the problem of slavery existed in many countries. By the beginning of the 19th century, some states began to fight this phenomenon, including the states of North and South America, in 1808, joined this struggle. However, slavery was not abolished at that time, just the import of slaves was prohibited. However, inside the United States and in Brazil, this business flourished. Prices for Africans skyrocketed, and slave owners made sure that the slaves they already had gave a lot of quality offspring. Slave owners encouraged relations between slaves, and often became the fathers of the children of slaves themselves. Often, slaves were made an offer that cannot be refused. For example, she was promised freedom if she gave birth to 15 children, and on average, it was considered the norm that slaves began to give birth at the age of 13 to 14, and by the age of 20, they already had time to give birth to five children. Slave owners bred slaves for special physical characteristics that they believed made them more valuable as workers. For example, they bred slaves who were tall and strong for a field work, and those who were shorter and more agile. For tasks like housework, men meeting the criteria were locked daily in rooms with six to seven women. It was their work and daily norm. Some of them would have gotten pregnant. The unfortunate were bred like cattle. Sad and tragic is the fate of an enslaved African-American, Pata Seca. He is known for having produced over 200 children for his master. The unfortunate man was bought specifically to produce offspring in the interests of his owner. In the 19th century, it became the property of a farmer from the Brazilian city of San San Carlos, with an impressive height of 7 feet 2 inches, 218 to 219 centimeters. He was considered an ideal candidate to create a strong workforce with good genetics. Pata Seiki's life depended on the wishes of its owner. His health was carefully monitored. He was well fed and forced to work as a breeding bull. As a result, Pata Seca became the father of more than 200 children who inherited the status of an enslaved father. That is, they also lived in slavery. In addition to his duties, Pata Seca also took care of the horses and was given the responsibility of delivering correspondence between the farm and the city. Due to his success in producing a significant number of offspring for his owner, Pate Seca was treated favorably. He was given special privileges and even received a piece of land from his master when slavery was abolished in Brazil in 1888. After gaining freedom, Pata Seca found love. He married a woman named Palmyra. They had nine children. On the land given to him by his former owner, Pata Seca built a house and a farm. Here he worked tirelessly to produce and sell ropadura, a hard form of unrefined cane sugar. Although his income was modest, Pata Seca was able to support his extended family. However, tragedy struck in Pata Seca's life when, one fateful morning, he accidentally stepped on a nail. The resulting injury led to tetanus, and despite the help of a local healer, his condition rapidly deteriorated. Pata Seca died in February 1958, at the age of 130, just three months after participating in the city parade as the oldest man in the district.